under the sound of my voice this evening, God. Just fill them with your presence, fill them with your goodness and your love, and Lord, bless us as we gather in your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Since the end of the month, we don't have a ton of announcements, but you will notice last week in the announcements I said that we were going to um, do the giveaway last week, and we didn't. Because <laughs> I completely forgot to go get the book back at the mail. <laughs> so we're still doing it. It's just going to be this week. Stay tuned to Facebook. We'll, we'll do our giveaway um, for a boy and for a girl um, on Facebook this week. That'll get done this week, I promise. Uh, Wednesday night, everybody's always invited to come to our Bible studies. They're right here at 630. Right now, we're going through the book of Isaiah. I think we're on chapter 11 or 12, so we're not like too far into it. You're welcome to join us for that. I encourage you to join us for that. It's always good to get into the Word and see God's heart revealed through the Scriptures. Um, and then this week on Tuesday, City Council meets. I'll be praying over that meeting before they start. Um, and as always, I encourage you to be as involved as you can be with your government. It's the only way to make sure it works for you instead of against you. <laughs> and that's it for the announcement. And we don't have anybody to dismiss just yet, so because they're harvesting what they what little they got out of the garden this year, they're they're harvesting what they got out there. So <sighs> I swear I've dropped everything today. So we're gonna talk about God not wanting you to be happy because He doesn't. That's news you wanted to hear, isn't it? So glad you came tonight for me to tell you God doesn't want you happy. <laughs> but the truth is, there is no scripture that says do what makes you happy anywhere. There is no um, passage that talks about self-care, like taking a day off and having a salon, a salon day or a spa day, going to treat yourself shopping. Or, there's nothing in Scripture that, that indicates that you should have days where you just treat yourself. Um, scripture says when God rested, he rested. It doesn't say that he went shopping. It doesn't say that he did something that made him feel good. He rested, right? He didn't keep moving. It doesn't <clears throat> include living your truth. God doesn't care what your truth is. It's not real. <laughs> the only truth there is is what he speaks. Is what he says. Is what's in scriptures. And is what he's convicted of you in your heart. So he's not even um, interested in what truths in your life make you happy. A lot of people build their whole life around this central truth that, that's not really true. <laughs> and so their happiness isn't really happiness. Now, does that mean God wants you to be scowling and hateful and mean and doing without? Absolutely not. God wants us to be joyful. The scriptures clearly indicate we are supposed to be joyful. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. That is spiritual maturity when we talk about joy. Joy is a byproduct of a relationship with God. You don't have to do anything to be joyful. You don't have to get anything to be joyful. If you have a relationship with God, according to the scriptures, you should have joy. Now, that measure of joy and, and how long you hold it into it, like I said, it's spiritual maturity. So you grow in that. But the joy comes from a relationship, not from what you do, not from what other people do, not from your circumstances. The joy God wants you to have is completely reliant on a relationship with him. So, I want it to be very clear, there is a difference between being happy and being joyful. So what is happy? Happy is very self-focused. Let's just be honest. Happy says, how do I feel? It doesn't ask how everybody else in the room feels. It doesn't ask how everybody, you know, felt yesterday. It doesn't... Worry about what's going on in the world. It's how do I feel right now? And we have a lot of, um, and I don't mean immature as in like your everyday walk mature. I mean immature in the scriptures and immature in the faith. We have a lot of immature in the scriptures and immature in the faith that base their feelings on what's going on around them. That base whether or not they're happy on those things. Because that's what happy is. It is very self-focused. I mean, it focuses on the things that make you that way. So people will begin to do things that make them feel happy. Um, it, and, and vice versa. My, my dad was an alcoholic, and he had a, a long stretch where he was sober, and, and I got to know him then, and he brought me to Jesus, and I'm thankful for that. But he had a chemical imbalance in his brain, and, and he had some other issues, and, and he didn't know that until he got older and began to try to get sober. So before that, what made him happy was being drunk. What made him happy that made everything not bother him anymore was being drunk. So that's what he did because that's what made him happy. But it, it didn't last, right? As soon as the sobriety sets in, as soon as the drunk wears off, as soon as the hangover kicks in, the joy you had the night before is not with you the morning of. Because it's not joy, it's happy. And happy is temporary. Happy is not going to be with you every moment of every day. You are not, and, and y'all ain't kids, you're not dumb, y'all are well aware, you experience it. 
You are not going to feel happy every second of the day. We would like to, but we're not gonna. We don't. It's just not supposed to be permanent. Happy is very much based on your circumstance, and that's why it's temporary. Happy lasts until you get hungry. I don't know if you've ever been around Nathan, but when it's close to mealtime, if he ain't eating, he is grouchy. I mean, terribly grouchy. When we started the church, we had um, Sunday morning services because we didn't have a building and planning and zoning didn't tell us no. So we were doing morning services at Lady Oscars. And when church was over, Tiffany went and had lunch, right? Well, if we had to stay and rearrange furniture or put stuff up or I had to stay out there and talk to somebody or whatever, the running joke was Nathan's getting hangry because he would start getting tooty because he didn't have something to eat. <laughs> happy depends on whether or not you're fed <laughs> for some people. Happy lasts until the next crisis hits. I have several people on my on, on Facebook that come up in my feed or whatever, and they come up quite often with the FML comment. They come up quite often with, my life is miserable, or there's nobody for me, or I help everybody else, but they won't help me, or um, nothing I ever do is good enough. Nothing I ever do is It's just constant ick. And then you'll have two or three days where you don't hear from it at all. And then they're posting again how their life is terrible and, and nothing's ever good. And then so the only time they ever post is when they are unhappy. Because they are looking for something to make them happy. And what they don't realize is once they gain it, those three days that they're quiet because they're happy, it doesn't last. Because the next crisis is going to hit. Your car is going to get a flat tire. Your boss is going to get mad and snark, snipe at you. Your kid is going to be disobedient and forget something. Your dog is going to bar from the floor. Whatever. You're not going to have it perfect. And they want that. And what they think they're reaching for, they're not getting. Because they think they're happy those three days. The problem with happy is, can you still be happy when all that crap is happening? No, because happy is temporary. Happy cannot share space with any other emotion. You cannot be happy and grieve. You can't. If you're grieving, you are not happy. You're not. You can be joyful, though. And there's a difference, and that's why. If you are angry at somebody, you're not happy. If you are feeling rejected by somebody, you're not, you cannot, happy only exists by itself. It is a very disconnected way to isolate you from the goodness that God has for you. The dictionary says it's a feeling or a showing of pleasure <laughs> or contentment. Um, definitely a feeling and showing of pleasure. Lots of people don't, um, if you're not expressing happiness, people think you don't have it. If you have resting certain face, you don't have it. <laughs> So it's just the way it looks. Psalms 144.15 says, Happy are the people of such blessings. Meaning, bless, the meaning in Strong's when it looks at that word happy is blessed. So happy then is created through blessings. That word happy, when you look it up in Strong's, it means blessed. So in order to be happy, you have to have blessings. Well, that makes sense. If somebody gives you a gift, you're happy. That's a blessing. If they don't give, say it's your birthday and they don't give you a gift, you're unhappy. You don't have any blessing. <laughs> it makes very good sense that happy is dependent on whether or not people are loving on you, whether or not people are receiving you, whether or not people are appreciating you. I think it's also interesting to note that in the English Standard Version, the word happy only shows up 10 times in all of Scripture. In the King James Version, the word happy doesn't appear at all. Happy, um, happier and happiness the derivatives appear several times, but the one doesn't even appear. On average, regardless of any volume, any version you look at, happiness does not appear, happy or its derivatives, happy, happy, or whatever. Um, they don't appear more than 30 times in all of Scripture, no matter what translation you have. The word is not, God doesn't care if you're happy. He wants you to be whole, and yes, he wants you to be joyful, but happy, he knows is fleeting. Happy's not going to hold you in the storm. Happy's not going to hang out when the crisis hits. Happy's not going to boo you while you wait for your snicker bar. Happy isn't going to be what gets you through, so he's not going to give a whole lot of attention to whether or not that's what you feel because that's not what you need. You need something entirely different. What you need is joy. So let's look at joy. Joy is others-focused. Joy isn't displayed by feelings. It's a state of being. It's as much of who you are. Joy isn't um, like happy as, oh, that girl is so happy, she's blah, 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 blah. If you say that girl has so much joy, there's a difference in that. That happiness is dependent on whatever's happening for her. The joy doesn't require anything to be contributed for you to have that. It's who you are as much as anything else. Now, that joy cannot be caused by a surprise birthday party. 
that joy cannot be caused by eating a snicker bar. That joy cannot be caused by getting a raise or a bonus or winning a, a queen of hearts. That joy can't be found that way. That's not joy. That's blessings. And blessings give you happiness. No, joy cannot be achieved on your own because joy is given by God. You can only get it from God. You can't get it from anything else. And I know a lot of people would challenge that. And I even had somebody challenge me on that once. I, and I stand firm. You cannot have joy outside of a relationship with God. You can't do it. What you have is happiness contentment, pleasure, maybe all of those things, but you don't have joy. You can't get it without the Lord. Because joy is permanent and it's growing. Joy is a living thing in us. When we talk about fruits of the Spirit, it's because that's maturity. And as you grow and mature in Christ, as you grow and mature in the Scriptures, you're going to be more and more joyful. You're gonna, your joy is going to be a little bit more solid, a little less dependent on the world and more dependent on God, the way it should be and the way it should be growing. Joy lasts even if you're in lack. Joy lasts even if you're in the middle of a battle. And joy can exist alongside pain and suffering. Whereas happiness can't, joy has room for that. Because joy doesn't stop just because stuff is hard. Joy doesn't end because joy is a byproduct of a relationship with God. And as long as you have a relationship with God, nothing can interfere with that. No lack, no attack, no um, bad mouthing, no lack of food, lack of housing, there's nothing that's going to interrupt your relationship with God, so nothing interrupts your joy. Defined, joy is a great feeling of pleasure and happiness, but we see it most clearly defined in Galatians 5.22, simply as part of the joy of the, uh, uh, the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We all know that scripture, we had to learn it under times. Now, here's the thing about joy. We just talked about happiness is found in the Bible no more than 30 times. He's saying stuff back there. <laughs> we know that happiness isn't really found in the Bible at, at great lengths. On the other hand, joy is found in the Bible throughout all translations at least 430 times. Because that's what God cares about. That's the message God wants you to have. God wants you the permanence. God wants you to have the maturity. God wants you to have the relationship. Because he knows that's what's going to get you through when you're in life. He knows that's, going to get, that's what's going to get you through when you're in peril, when you're in need, when you need something from someone or from him. It's joy that will hold you steady. This is the feel good God wants for his children. He doesn't want you happy, but he does want you joyful. He wants you extremely excited about your life. He wants you extremely excited about the blessings he has for you. He definitely wants us to experience goodness and, and kindness and love, but those things don't come from happy because... Something bad can happen and you can lose your happy. Those things come from joy. As Christians, we're supposed to spread the good news. That's what the gospel is. That's what Jesus is. We all know that good news is what we're supposed to do. Christianity should be good news. But if God's people continue to choose happiness over joy, there is never going to be any good news. And that's what we do because happy is easy to get. I am 500 pounds in the size of a barn because I get happiness from food. I will admit it. I have an unhealthy relationship with food. It makes me happy. <laughs> Does it make me healthy? Absolutely not. God wants us to choose joy. And if instead of turning to food to make myself feel better about whatever's going on, I should be turning to scripture and let joy sustain me through whatever is going on. God's people have to choose joy because joy produces power. If God's people are caught in circumstance, there's no good news. There's nothing there. And truth, the good news is truth. And truth needs joy, not happiness. If his people choose joy, then people around us, those that are unchurched, unsaved, those that we're supposed to be reaching, see power. It takes a powerful person to smile and genuinely have a good time and genuinely enjoy life while they've got crap going on. It takes somebody of great strength to not project disappointment or, or anger or grudges or bitterness onto other people when you're feeling that. It takes a strong person to say, this is my war, <laughs> this is my battle, and while me and God figure it out, I'm going ahead as if it's already done. Because the truth is it is. Our joy comes from knowing that God has already done all of it. 
And he loves us as our father. He loves us as our friend. He loves us as our creator. He loves us as our savior. He loves that relationship produces that joy. And people who have joy have power. They have power over Satan's schemes to derail them. They have power over man's ability to um, belittle them. They have power over circumstance. They have power over anything that would distract them from a relationship with God. Joy is what sustains them through it. If God's people are rooted in love, that's the best news. And you don't really get rooted in love without being rooted in joy. That's why all the fruits of the Spirit are listed all together. You get them all at once. You don't pick and choose. They all come, and they mature as you do. So the good news is our witness. And our witness, it's not the sermon we share. It's not the Bible we carry. It's not how many times we go to church. It's not how long we've been in church. It's not um, if we follow the next popular televangelist. It's not how, many, how much worship music we listen to. Our witness is our life that reflects joy. If you were to tell me that you love Jesus and Jesus saved your life and you believe he can save my life and you go to church and then I see you constantly begging and crying and worry about everything in your life, I am not inclined to join you on that journey. It doesn't look fun. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Right? And, I, and I, I'm not taking anything away from it. Even if I'm saved, even if I love Jesus sitting here right now, if I couldn't say that I live most days in joy, I don't want to do it. You, this world is not built for the happiness of the Christian. Right now, the, the political tensions, right now the current um, sociolo sociological tensions are that the church is bad. Because I'll be honest, the church has been bad sometimes. Throughout history, the church has made some major mistakes. <laughs> Let's be honest. It has. And so when they look at us, they see what they think we are. What we need to show is that we have joy. Because guess what? None of us like the fact that Miracle Whip is $7 a jar. But we can complain that it's $7 a jar and get on forums and talk about how we need to vote somebody else in and vote how we need to vote this guy out and talk about how the whole world is going to hell and talk about revelations. Or, or we can say Miracle Whip is $7 a jar and have our husband make fun of us because we use that as a point all the time and he says it's first world problems. And he's like, it's Miracle Whip. You don't have to have it. <laughs> Why are you letting it get you all keyed up? You'll be all right. It's valid that there's inflation, that stuff costs more. But we can choose to say, God's going to take care of it and I'm going to keep my joy till it happens. Or we can join everybody else and talk about how awful the world is. Our witness is not going to church. Our witness isn't saying, I'm a Christian. Our witness is saying, that price is astronomical. And then being able to laugh at the ridiculousness that I would put energy toward that over putting energy toward child sex trafficking. That I'm going to spend an hour or two on Facebook on all the social media platforms putting down any local issues, any local ordinances, instead of spending the same hour and a half going and lobbying with our state representatives about child sex trafficking. I won't do that, but I'll complain online. I, get, I can't tell you how many people I talk to on a regular basis they have no idea who our representative is. They've never even spoke to him. If I say the name to them, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Because it's familiar. They've seen the ads and stuff that the, the politicians run stuff on TV, but they don't know who they are. Why? Because they don't care. People with joy focus on what God focuses on. Because it is a byproduct of a relationship with God. And Joy says, the little stuff doesn't get my attention. Because what happens when, if I let all the little stuff get my attention, then I start searching for happiness. Because I'm distracted. I'm distracted from my purpose. I'm distracted from what I was made for. I'm distracted from the call God has in my life. I've lost the picture when I start focusing on the little stuff. As long as I keep my hand firmly in His, joy is mine to be had. And I don't have to do anything to get it. I don't have to beg for it. I don't have to ask for it. God has already given it. I just gotta use it. I gotta realize it and I gotta use it. Our witness in this life is reflecting joy, not happiness. Being happy is not on God's radar for us. Being joyful is on the radar. Being joyful is what he desires for his children. Lord, help us see the difference between happy and joyful. Lord, let us know, well, happy isn't bad, Lord, it's joyful that has the power. It's joy that brings us closer to you and to each other. It's joy that buoys a community. Lord, help us see the value in joy. Lord, help us see the, the power in joy in our lives and seize opportunities to display that to others so that they would see you and be drawn into your kingdom and into your love. 
We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.